Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about dead space ventilation and we'll compare the two common etiologies that result in dead space ventilation and understand some of the nuances. So the question we asked in the previous lecture was does increased alveolar dead space causes hypercapnia? If we looked at the formula that PaCO2 is inversely proportional to minute ventilation multiplied by 1 minus dead space ventilation. So if your VD by VT ratio increases, that means your denominator becomes smaller and your PaCO2 increases. However, hypercapnia will cause acidosis and that would cause a compensatory increase in minute ventilation and that would increase your alveolar ventilation as well and that should compensate for increased dead space ventilation and drop your PaCO2. However, you have seen your COPD patient to be hypercapnic. We'll try to understand why that happens. The difference lies because of the difference in the alveoli of these two diseases. In a COPD, you deal with increased resistance and loss of elasticity of the alveolar walls. And these alveoli have long time constant and they're prone to air trapping. While in pulmonary embolism, you have a normal airways and normal functioning alveoli, but unfortunately there is no flow to these alveoli because of the clot. We have a normal patient here with black dots representing CO2. Blue is the ventilation. We have got a normal PSU2 of 40, pH of 7.4, and this person is breathing at normal rate of 12 and tidal volume of 500 cc's. His alveolar ventilation is 4.2 and a dead space ventilation is 1.8. Let's see what happens if the patient develops pulmonary embolism. Now we have got these two alveoli with no blood flow through them. So these are now dead spaces. That has now increased your dead space ventilation to 3.9 liters per minute and alveolar ventilation has dropped to 2.1. You will see that the blood is now more directed towards the normal alveoli now CO2 is pretty easily diffusible, so that shouldn't affect the CO2 diffusion across the membrane. However, the new concentration of CO2 in the alveoli will be higher, let's say 44. So this drop in the alveolar ventilation has caused your PaCO2 to increase, and that's going to make your pH lower. And lower pH, as you understand, is a stimulator for your minute ventilation. So we'll just change the respiratory rate here for our purposes, but understand that both respiratory rate and tidal volume will both increase. So now we have a respiratory rate of 24 and you're back to your alveolar ventilation of 4.2 and that should take care of your PSU2, which will drop down to 40. But you have to notice that the dead space ventilation has also increased and that is why the patients are breathing a little harder. Normal PSU2 will normalize your pH back to 7.4. So the only difference now as the patient is breathing faster, his alveolar ventilation remains the same, but his dead space ventilation has increased. However, this is not the end of the story. Patient is also hypoxic. He's anxious because of the sympathetic surge caused by lower blood pressure and their pulmonary receptors in the capillaries and the alveolar wall. These will cause more stimulation for breathing these would result in more higher respiratory rate. So now your alveolar ventilation, say for example, is 5.25. Your dead space also has increased. However, your PaCO2 is now 34 because of increased ventilation. So in fact, patients with acute PE will be hypocapnic and have respiratory alkalosis. So the learning point in this case is increase in dead space will usually not cause hypercapnia as your body will adjust your minute ventilation. If the amount of dead space is extreme, hypoxia will come much earlier than hypercapnia. Though hypercapnia can still occur in these cases, if you have neuromuscular problem, that means you cannot really increase your minute ventilation for that drop in pH. For example, if your patient is on a ventilator and is on heavy sedation, you might be able to see these patients becoming hypercapnic. So why do COPD patients become hypercapnic? COPD patients have multiple other issues apart from dead space. There's increased airway resistance in COPD because of narrowing of airways and hypertrophy of smooth muscles. There is hypertrophy of mucous membranes and increased airway secretion. And there is accompanied inflammation and swelling. 
they also are associated with destruction of alveoli and the elasticity of the lung decreases. So increased airway resistance causes increased work of breathing and also causes air trapping, while the destruction of the alveoli will cause more dead space and again this is a wasted ventilation so you will have increased work of breathing. So COPD patients at baseline have harder time to breathe than a normal person. Increased airway resistance combined with destruction of the alveoli will result in these alveoli with very long time constant that means they are slow to empty and that would cause air trapping. Air trapping along with the loss of lung elasticity will result in these patients breathing at higher FRC. Breathing at higher FRC will result in more flattened diaphragm so your diaphragmatic muscles are at much compromised position for the same work of breathing. These patients will also develop auto-peep because of air trapping that would increase the work of breathing. All this will result in increased CO2 production and the way the COPD patient will compensate for it is by increasing their tidal volume and not the rate as we talked about in our work of breathing lecture. Let's see what happens in COPD exacerbation. Now we have a more inflamed airway because of say infection. The airways are more reactive, there's more secretion and there is more airway obstruction. This is going to cause increased resistance for cough breathing and increased CO2 levels because of increased production. That would make these patients breathe a little faster and you already know that when these COPD patients are increasing their respiratory rate to increase the minute ventilation, they are getting into trouble. Increased rate will result in shorter exhalation time and will result in air trapping. We already know that the alveolar time constant was high to begin with, now that becomes even worse. Air trapping results in auto peep and now the person has to work against the auto peep and therefore their work of breathing is going to increase even further. Now they are breathing harder and making more CO2 levels and increasing their respiratory rate. They are possibly more anxious at this point of time. Air trapping will cause their diaphragm to get more flattened, therefore more inefficient breathing. Their FRC will be much higher, so elastic work of breathing also increases. Their work of breathing is much harder because now instead of just resistive work of breathing, they are working against the auto peep and elastic work of breathing. And slowly as the time progresses, they are going to tire out and their respiratory rate is going to drop and now their CO2 levels are much higher because till this time they are trying to compensate with increased respiratory rate to increase the alveolar ventilation. Now that has been compromised as well. So you can see that there are multiple ways why CO2 levels in these patients rise and therefore to treat a COPD patient you have to counter all these mechanisms that are happening in your patient. The first thing is to reverse the underlying condition. So you give them bronchodilators such as albuterol and ipratropium and steroids and antibiotics to curb secretion and inflammation. The most important thing that helps these patient is countering their auto peep. You can use CPAP or the expiratory PAP to help this patient. If they are on the ventilator, you can adjust your peep to counter the auto peep. Countering auto peep is really important in these patients. Please review how to find optimal peep in these patients in my previous lecture. The links are in the comment section below. If they are tiring out, use of BiPAP can help augment their tidal volume. To reduce the anxiety, use dexmetomidine rather than benzodiazepines because dexmetomidine can still keep their respiratory drive while removing their anxiety component. Other medications such as opiates can sometimes work against you by making them more sleepy and prevent them from protecting their airways. Once they are on the ventilator, you can use sedation to decrease the work of breathing and make them comfortable. Once on the ventilator, you can use PEEP to counter your auto PEEP more precisely. Once you have done all the right things, you will see their work of breathing decreasing and CO2 levels slowly coming down. When you use non-invasive ventilation, you should be able to see these effects within 30 minutes to 1 hour. And if they're failing the BiPAP, that means their CO2 levels are still high, these patients would most likely need to be intubated and placed on invasive mechanical ventilation or at least monitored in more intensive settings. So in summary, 
increased dead space will cause compensatory increase in minute ventilation to increase the alveolar ventilation. Now this will tend to correct the hypercapnia unless your neuromuscular system is compromised. In COPD patients, hypercapnia is caused by multiple pathophysiological reasons other than dead space and understand those mechanisms to treat your patients. Thank you.